This is a Gold's Gym 510 stride trainer elliptical. Uh, it uses D cells to run the electronics. It's a 6 volt uh, system with 4 D cells in it. But it also, if you remove the D cells, you could actually just power it off of a 6 volt adapter. There's a little connector right here inside. And it says, I don't know if you can read that, 6 volts, 2 amps minimum. So I went rooting around in my uh, junk box where I keep power supplies that I keep from old stuff that I dispose of. And I couldn't find a 6 volt power supply that would supply more than 2 amps. But what I did find is I have this 12 volt where's that? It's a 12 volt 5 amp power supply. And it has the correct connector on it. Well, let's see. Here's the back of the elliptical and then here's the connector. Plugs right in nicely. But the problem is it's 12 volts. So we're going to change that. In order to change it, we're going to insert this little DC-DC buck converter in line with the um, power cord. And it uses an LM2596, which used to be made by National Semiconductor. It's a simple switcher. Uh, you can get these boards on eBay for less than three bucks. Um, and what it'll do is it'll take an input of up to 35 volts and it's um, pretty much the max voltage on the input cap. I wouldn't exceed 25 volts on these but anyways uh, it takes the input voltage and then buck converts it down through this inductor and the switcher and then filters a little bit with this output cap and you can adjust the output from pretty much the input voltage minus a couple of volts to a down to about 1.25 volts and this guy can do 3 amps um, the output connections are there so what we're going to do is cut the cable like here connect the output side to the connector and then the input side to the power supply which is going to be supplying 12 volts we're going to adjust it down to 6 volts and then we're going to connect it to the machine and see how it works. So here I've cut the end of the cable off from the connector and I've stripped back the insulation on the outside and just wrapped the um, outer sleeve of the cable around. This is the ground side of the cable and then the white section I'll strip off and that'll be the positive output of the power supply. If you're unsure you can always just hook up the power supply after you've stripped the connection back and just measure it. You should be reading a positive voltage on the white in relationship to the outer jacket which should be the ground. So here I've taken and connected the positive from the power supply to the in positive of the buck converter board and then the shield wire I wrapped and then tinned all the way back to the um, insulation and then I soldered it down to the N minus of the buck converter board and the next thing we'll do is we'll turn on the power supply measure the output voltage here and adjust it down to 6 volts with the set screw that's not a set screw but potentiometer so I have the uh, power supply powered on and we can measure the input voltage it is at 12.24, 12.23 volts and then the output of the DC-DC converter is sitting at 5.22 and if we adjust it with the screw we can actually, if I'm going clockwise raise the voltage just by turning it slowly I'm going to set it for about probably 6.2 volts even though the thing asks for 6 that way, when there's a little bit of loss in the wire, it is 6 volts at the supply input of the uh, connector. And I'm going to go ahead and finish soldering the output uh, on. And we're going to go hook it up to the elliptical and see how it works. 
Now that I have the 12 volt power supply that's converted down to 6 volts plugged in, let's see how it works. And look, we're on over here. And let's test the fan. Fan works great. Anyways, I'm going to finish wrapping it up, clean it up, zip tie everything down, and give me a few seconds here and I'll get back to you. So I just tucked the board where the batteries go, and then I stuck the cord through the slot and the cover, and then I'm just going to screw the cover down. So here it is, all cleaned up. And I have the power cord running underneath the machine to the back. And we have the machine running. No batteries. Well, I hope this video helped somebody. Thanks for watching. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. Have more to come.